Racism is the most powerful system on the planet, yet it is often perceived as the most taboo subject to discuss. World-renowned activist and best-selling author Tariq Nasheed takes on this challenge head-on in his new book, Foundational Black American Race Baiter. This is the most important book you will need in order to understand the mechanisms of systemic racism and how to counter this system. Get Foundational Black American Race Baiter now at Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. Also get limited autographed collector's editions of the book at OfficialFBA.com. Boom. Here we are. We're here. What's going on with you guys, man? I'm here. Everybody come on in the room. We're live right now. We are live right now on this wonderful Father's Day. Let me let everybody know on my social media that I'm live right now, ladies and gentlemen. While you guys pile on in the room. Editions of the book at official BA. Turn my volume down. I'm just letting the social medias know that I'm live. Man, glad to have everybody here, man. It's Father's Day. Hope everybody's spending time with their family. Got all my babies here. I got my all my children are here. My oldest daughter, my youngest babies, all my babies are here. My nieces and nephews are here. So we are chilling right now at the crib. Let me just throw some stuff on social media real quick, family, and then we'll be real ready and real good to go. Just throwing some stuff on here. How y'all been, man? I hope you guys had a great weekend. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Um, everybody hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Um, also, retweet this on Twitter. Put this on your social media. Retweet this, ladies and gentlemen. Let everybody know that we are in here. Let everybody know that we're in here, ladies and gentlemen. We are in here doing our thing. Ladies and gentlemen, let everybody know we're doing our thing in here. Let me throw this up on my social media real quick. Y'all give me a second. Hold on one second. Uh, hold on. Y'all bear with me for one second. Uh, boom. All right. So we in here. Hope you guys spend time with the kids. Women, I hope y'all let your, your baby dad spend time with their children and y'all weren't playing no games with them. Hope you were doing the right thing. But we're here, man. We're here. Shout out to all the fathers in here. Shout out to all the dads that's out here doing the, the real thing and the right thing, ladies and gentlemen. Um, listen. We're going to talk about some deep stuff tonight. We won't be on too, too long. I won't keep you too, too, too long. What's up, more melanin? How are you, beloved? We won't be on here too, too long because I know you got to get back to your families and all that. But we're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff tonight. And again, I'm going to need you to retweet this. Retweet the link to the broadcast. All right? Let's do that. Hold on one second. Uh, hold on. Let me throw this one last one up on my Facebook, and then we'll be good to go for real, for real. All right, man. But well, look, 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 look. First of all, before we get into the 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 nightly isms, before we get into what we get into, I gotta thank everybody who came to the Hidden History Museum last night. Who was at the Hidden History Museum last night? Who all came to the Hidden History Museum? If you're in here and you came to the Hidden History Museum, let me see where you are. Make some noise, let me see a hand. For those who came to the Hidden History Museum last night, if you were here in LA at the Hidden History Museum, let me see a hand in the air. First of all, I have to thank Everybody who came out to the Hidden History Museum to the Juneteenth celebration we had last night. For, that's first and foremost. Got to take my hat off to you. Did we have a great time last night? Did we have a great time here in Los Angeles or not? We had a phenomenal time last night. We had a phenomenal time last night. 
it was lit, it was packed, we had a great time. People really enjoyed the food, they enjoyed the displays, they enjoyed the music, they enjoyed the comics, the comics were good, and the vibe was great. Y'all missed it if you didn't come. Yeah? You was in the spot, Troy? Shout out to Troy. Did I meet you last night, Troy? Because I met a lot of people last night. What's up, Janae? You were there, beloved? Did we have fun last night? The food was great. Man, we overfed people. We had people taken to go places. We had so much food. Shout out to Chef Marilyn, one of our great FBA chefs out here in California, in Los Angeles. Um, people love her spot. And she caters a lot of my events. And, you know, Chef Marilyn just brings a whole bunch of food. Yeah, you got to take some plates home. Yeah, man. So we we overfed people. Yes, indeed. The people were very steady. They loved the food. Yeah, Dwan B. Shout out to our brother, Dwan B., who was the host. Um, Dwan always comes through with it. Um, we're going to have another event July 1st. My birthday, you know, my birthday is on July 1st, so we're going to have a birthday party for me at the museum. So y'all let me, y'all got to come through to that now, that you got to come through. Y'all got to come through to that. That's going to be 4th of July weekend too. Y'all got to come through. We'll give you the details on that in a couple of days. All right. Shanika, you took a plate? Yes. We had plenty of food. People were taking plates. You said you got the itis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Dwan B made a joke about that. Like, yeah, damn, everybody eating all this soul food, getting the itis, it's time to wake up. Well, you still eating the plate now? Yeah. And let me show you guys a clip from last night. Just a short clip, not too much. I'll show you guys a quick little clip from last night. I will show that. One second, where are we? All right, here's a little clip from last night. I had my good brother... London Brown, London Brown from the Raisin Canaan show. London's a great comedian. London always comes through and represents. He always tears the house down. So this is us last night turning up at the Hidden History Museum. Hold on, where we at? It's not the same. It's not the same. We had a good time. As you see, we didn't have a ball, man. So we had a ball. All right, so that's, that's just giving you a sample. That's how we were getting down last night, man. Just real fun, clean vibes, positive vibes. Just us having a great time, man. Just us having a phenomenal time. And um, uh, people are just so proud of the venue, man. And I, and I thank all of you guys who supported us putting the venue together, man. Just the whole thing. Man, again, I, I got to give you guys a, a heartfelt thank you. Everybody who supported us putting the museum together. I, I really want y'all to understand the impact of that. Yeah, we were in there heavy. We had a great time. Yeah, Chef Marilyn's on Crenshaw. She's open every day. Y'all got to go to Chef Marilyn. Her food is very reasonably priced. Her food is delicious, man. It's right on Crenshaw. It's right around the corner from us. Yeah. But um, um, I, look, man, you guys did such a phenomenal thing by supporting the museum. You guys, I really want y'all to understand the impact that you're making that you've already made. And we got to continue to do it, man. We got a place, man, a grassroots institution where we can all get together, defined by our own terms, and enjoy ourselves, love each other, vibe, um, entertain each other, learn from each other, network with each other, and we ain't got nobody watching over our shoulder. You, you, you understand? We do these things on our terms, and you see everything is fly, everything is fresh, everything is cool, everybody's having a ball, and I want y'all to understand, man, with the museum and these events we have, like, for example, last night alone, family, you guys helped us 
not only did the the audience enjoy the entertainment and everything, not only did the audience enjoy coming through and looking at the artifacts, and not only did they enjoy vibing with each other and networking, I saw some people hooking up. I saw, you know, you can meet your mate up there. You, it's a, you can meet the love of your life up there. A lot of good, um, like-minded folks. I, I saw some choosing up in there, which is great. The, the people love the food. People love the drinks and all of that stuff. But I want y'all to understand, man. Listen, just last night alone, that museum paid the salary of at least 20 black people just last night alone. Y'all paid the salary of about 20 black people from the community. And that's the important thing. I want y'all to understand, see, we create our own economy. You guys, we, not only did I have my regular staff there, I had my event staff that comes in on different events. Then we had the comics themselves, they all got paid. Then we have, when you include Chef Marilyn and her team, we're talking about 20 people, at least 20 black folks, all employed by the museum. Everybody's getting paid. Everybody's able to feed their families. Everybody's able to make a good living within the community, man. And everybody was so happy. Everybody's happy. Yeah? Because you got people who want to work. You got people who want to be a part of something like this where black folks can get together and do their thing and it's serving the community. Everybody's having a great time. Yeah. Everybody's taking care of each other. We got to keep that vibe going. Yeah. Keeping the black dollars circulating and all. Real talk, man. See, that's a power move. Oh, yeah, y'all, what not staff? Did we have a phenomenal staff? Boy, our sisters, boy, we had a phenomenal staff. And the brothers, too. Shout out to my brother, Mont. Um, shout out to my other brother, LV. That's my right-hand man. That's the head of my security. If you ever see me out, you're going to see my boy, LV. And the ladies be choosing on my boy, LV. The ladies love my the head of my security. The lady, because he's a young brother from Inglewood. So the, the ladies love that brother. So we are giving opportunities to brothers and sisters in the community, man. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing, man. And this is something that we need to continue. I do want to expand to other cities. I absolutely want to do that. I absolutely want to expand to other cities. And the thing is, we're in that area of Los Angeles. And that area was once a very prosperous area for black people. That was a place where we all got together and, and did what we're doing now. And the government and the city planners put a wrench in that. They deliberately tried to, but well, they didn't try. They actually did bust it up. That area where, where the museum is, Jefferson Park, that Jefferson Park, West Adams area, that was a very prosperous black area. A lot of black celebrities lived over there back in the 1940s, like um, Ray Charles Studio was around there, um, Hattie McDaniel, uh, hell, Marvin Gaye, um, their family house was right around the corner from the museum. A lot of well-to-do black people lived over there. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, they did things to sabotage that neighborhood to bust up a lot of the black businesses there. So, so y'all got to come on out, man. Just the energy, just the energy is phenomenal. You then Steve used to be down the street from there. Yeah, yeah. So y'all got to come on through, man. Yeah, yeah. So if. The next spot we're going to do, uh, Hidden History Museum, will definitely be Atlanta. The next spot will definitely be Atlanta. Uh, you grew up right there? Yeah. And what's interesting, people come in and tell me stories about the neighborhood who's been there for a long time. Where our building is, so a brother came in and told me it used to be a record store back in the 60s, I think. He said it used to be a record store. He said he came in and James Brown was in there. So I'm trying to find some more information about that. See, a lot of our history is hidden, for real, for real. And I'm, I learn new things about the neighborhood just from a lot of locals. Some of the elders come in here and they'll say, hey, you know, such and such, some black folks own that across the street and whoop-de-whoop. -whoop. So that, I love that type of stuff. And, and it's a great place the elders can come in and have a good time and just enjoy themselves. Yeah? You say, damn, no Texas. Well, we got to do it step by step. 
We got to do it step by step. Uh -huh. You're born and raised in Atlanta. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The next, if we do another spot, it will definitely be Atlanta. You know. But um, we in here. And, and again, go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Again, we're gonna have my birthday, July first, birthday party up there. So um, what what food should we have for that weekend? What what do y'all have a taste for? It's all about you guys. People were tearing that damn food up last night. Um, but um, what do you guys have a taste for? I want to get some some new caterers in there and just kind of do the damn thing. All right. Oh, man. So y'all let me know what kind of food you want. And we're going to make it do what it do. Um, it's important for us to take control of our historic narrative tracing and, 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 and putting this stuff back in the perspective of the museum. And also, by the way, if you're in California, tomorrow on NBC, they're doing a story about the Hidden History Museum. If you're in California, on the NBC station out here, I think after the Today Show, on California Live, there's a show that comes on out here called California Live, they're doing a story about the Hidden History Museum um, tomorrow morning. So y'all need to tune in to NBC. I think, doesn't the Today Show come on NBC? Just Turkey LA? Y'all throw some names at me, guys. Throw some caterers, because I want to start showcasing different caterers in LA. That's another thing. We want to bring in different caterers so we can let people know who they are. Um... So let me know some different caterers who we can possibly have come on in and um, cater for us for my birthday party, man, so we can make it happen. The California Live, that's on NBC, that comes on after the Today Show. Yeah, so that comes on Channel 4 here in Los Angeles. Um, what time does the Today Show end? So I guess it's going to come on, um, hold on. What time does the Today Show end? The Today Show... Okay, the Today Show comes on... Um, what the hell time does it come on? All right. Trying to see what time the Today Show comes on. Where's the schedule? Hold on one second. Today in LA. Okay, well, the California Live Show, that comes on um, at 11.30, I think. NBC 4 News. Yeah, so California Live Tomorrow morning, 11.30 a.m. 11.30 a.m. All right? So y'all can check that out. All right. Put it on my page. You know I should. Well, when I record it, I'll record it tomorrow. I'll have some of you guys record it, and then I'll put it up. I'll do it like that. So every shout out to everybody who's just getting in the room. Happy Father's Day. To everybody who's getting in the room, happy Father's Day to you. Now listen, West Coast Wings and Sliders, that sounds good. Where are they located? Or do they have a truck? A lot of these places, if they have a truck, that would be great. So everything, can they could just kind of pull up and do their thing. That would be great. But listen. Us controlling our narrative is very important. Controlling the narrative for Juneteenth because they're trying to remix Juneteenth. Anything that we put energy behind, you know, they'll try to get it and flip it. And then alleviate us from it, you know. That's the that's the tricky part of things. And they're doing that with Juneteenth, and also they're doing that with our struggle as foundation of black Americans and our struggle and fight for freedom. 
You see, a lot of these groups are not really aggrieved. And a lot of these groups, they have surrendered to white supremacy. That's why when I hear groups go around talking about, well, black people, you weren't the, you weren't the only people who were oppressed. I'm East Indian and we were oppressed at one point. Well, here's the thing. You have been completely psychologically colonized by your oppressor to the point where you identify with your oppressor and you label yourself as white. You see, when these other groups talk about how they've been oppressed because of their ethnic differences and then you classify yourself as white, you've been defeated. You've been defeated and you are now identifying with your oppressor, which makes you different from us. That makes you different. So you can't stand next to us talking about oppression when you, you've not, you're not fighting it no more. When you're walking around labeling yourself white, you are identifying with your oppressor. We're the only people who are fighting white supremacy still. We're fighting the oppressive system. And we got to understand a lot of these other groups, they have not really been aggrieved. And a lot of them pretend that they've been aggrieved. So what they do, they have to either bring us around or they have to steal or co-opt our verbiage. They have to use our terms and have us stand next to them while pretending they are equally aggrieved as they minimize our aggrievement. Okay? They have to minimize our aggrievement and it's very disrespectful. They do it to us. They know not to do it to other groups. And what, what they're doing now, the white LGBT community, with their disrespect, they're trying to get more dollars allocated to them. And right now, there's a pushback from the white L against the white LGBT community trying to groom children, trying to promote things to children. There is a justifiable pushback. You shouldn't be bringing none of that stuff to children. And in a lot of these red states, there's pushback on them being allowed to bring their child grooming nonsense to these schools. So now the, the, the fact that they are not allowed to bring their child grooming to a lot of these schools, they're trying to sit up here and act like, well, you're treating, this is the same kind of oppression black people go through. No, don't bring us in your mess. See, we have to check them on that. Don't bring us into your mess because we ain't with that. Leave the children alone. Whatever your lifestyle is, let your lifestyle be that. But we ain't with this thing where y'all bringing in the kids. And, we are not with that. So now, again, they're using a lot of the language from our foundational black American history. So now... They're up here talking about, in Texas, they got a rainbow underground railroad, all right, where they can flee the red states like Texas. They're trying to flee because of the rainbow underground railroad. Do y'all understand how disrespectful this is? Now, here's one of the realtors who's a part of the Rainbow Underground Railroad, who's helping Texans leave the state. This is their, they're trying to compare themselves to us, foundational black Americans, who were really aggrieved. Now, listen to some of this stuff here. Listen to this. Hold on. Believe, uh, what did it take for you to reach that point in your decision making? For that, it was just the amount of legislation that's been going on in the state of Texas. It is, uh, it is not Texan friendly, not to all Texans, um, especially when it comes to the LGBTQI plus community. Um, just the amount of legislation that's been, uh, or bills that have been introduced this year alone is it's staggering and it I don't feel like Texas is my home anymore. And then coupled with 
honestly, I he may can't, not have. Uh, he can't even get it out. He's tr he's trying. I want y'all to see what he's doing. He's trying to make compare them not being being able to groom kids. That's all this is. Well, the legislation and the bill that's being nobody's oppressing you guys. Nobody's telling you to not be LGBT. The, the thing is, really, don't bring that nonsense around no kids. So he can't even verbalize it and get the lie together. Escape, that's what I'm, escape what? What are you escaping? How dare you try to sit here and compare that to what we went through talking about the damn Underground Railroad? Hold on. He's trying to stumble to find some kind of comparison, comparative justification. He's reaching. Um. Gun violence that has happened in the state of Texas over the last couple of years. Gun um, violence? Yeah, gun vi what gun the gun violence has been just targeted against random people. So that's not even really an LGBT in that's not an LGBT thing. Yeah, talking about the gun violence. No, the gun violence in Texas is these white supremacist people just shooting up random people. They're not targeting LGBT people. I've gotten to the point where I am kind of hesitant about where I'm like if I'm going anywhere like how big of an event I'm going to because I just I don't know um the last time that we had a event was or I say, I say a shooting was Allen which is about 20 minutes from where I live and we had uh I went to Frisco Mall later that day and that mall wasn't ev uh, evacuated because they thought it was going to happen again someone was making uh, threats inside the mall and I mean, like we were in, I was at David Buster's and then we had people rushing us out outside. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't do that. What this. does that have to do with LGBT? What, what is he talking about family? What is he talking about? What does any of that have? Nobody, they weren't targeting LGBT people. What is he talking about? <laughs> boy, what kind of false comp boy, he's grasping so hard. He's talking about a random shooting because there is no aggrievement. Nobody's oppressing them at all. You're not being oppressed at all. Nobody's oppressing you at all. Nobody's even saying that you can't be LGBT. So you, he's reaching for something to make a, got to make a false comparison. Yeah, there was a shooting outside of Dave and Buster's and, uh, man, there was a mall shooting and, um, in Allen, yeah, and I'm not too far from there. Nigga, what are you saying? What are you talking about? This dude, he, he's trying to find something to make it seem like he's being oppressed somewhere. He can't find it. <laughs> I mean, he's just saying shit. <laughs> They're not targeted. You are the most uh, protected class in the country. A white LGBT person, nobody's more protected than you. For real. Let's let's, for, let's talk Turkey here. The white LGBT community is the most protected class in the country. You have every bill that protects you. Every politician speaks up for your needs. All of the corporate entities cater to you. You can't walk into a store without rainbow this and pride that. All of all of these billions of dollars allocated towards your organizations. We black folks, we can't get grants because all of the money goes to you guys. I'm telling you now, us with the museum, we're struggling to get grants because we call up to these places and we write to these places and all the resources have been allocated to white LGBT organizations that all this, this money is supposed to go to minority communities. They are a minority. You understand? So we suffer because of these privileged class people getting money that's supposed to go to us who we've been really aggrieved. We can't even damn get it. We got to do stuff on the grassroots in order for us to stay afloat. And these people get billions of dollars allocated towards them. And he's up here, well, um, there was um, uh, there was a shooting near me. Um, yeah. This guy can't even articulate what his oppression is. Come on. this We got to call this stuff out.
Hold on, let me play some more. He's still struggling. Hold on. This, this is it's too much. So are you able to share or do you feel comfortable sharing where you're he headed to next? Um, we're uh, heading to Michigan. Okay, so pretty far then. Um, the, the other side of the U.S. for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the hell we you have talking? family up there, um, and we have got. What, what are you? Ex what are you escaping, dude? You, you talk. Well, yeah, we're gonna go to the other side of the country. <laughs> yeah. This is not an underground railroad. You can't compare yourself to what foundational black Americans went through. That is mad disrespectful. We had to have an underground railroad because it was illegal for us to move around. We would get punished. We would get our foot cut off if we left somebody's property, dude. Don't compare your shit to us because y'all want to groom some damn kids and you want to compare yourself to us using the same language? No. It was illegal for us to leave people's property, people who wanted to rape us and oppress us and work us to death. It was illegal for us to get the hell up and leave and say, hey, man, I don't want to be raped. It was illegal for us to say that. You dig? It ain't the damn same, dude. Don't minimize what we went through because you want to groom some goddamn kids. And y'all skinning and grinning. Yeah, I'm going to move to Michigan. <laughs> That's mad disrespectful, man. That's extremely disrespectful. You don't have an underground railroad because you're not being forced to leave anywhere. Nobody's doing anything to you. Our people had something done to them. They were castrating our people, decapitating our people, mutilating our people's bodies. Raping and sodomizing our people legally. So yeah, we had to have underground networks to get the hell on away from that. There is no comparison. Don't minimize our history because you want to groom some kids. They don't do that to other groups. You understand? They don't do that false comparison to other groups in the dominant society. They don't have the, the rainbow concentration camp. They know better, right? They know better than to have the rainbow concentration camp. They know better than to have that, to even compare themselves to that. They know things will get shut down very quickly. We went through real things out here on the Underground Railroad where we had to fight for our lives. Our families were being sold off. These people were taking our babies and selling our babies. And y'all are mad because you want to groom kids down there. And people are saying, no, leave the kids alone. Oh, God, I'm so oppressed. I'm going to have to escape. God. Hello? Uber? Can you help me escape on the Underground Railroad? God damn, man. These people are so disrespectful. Let me play some more of this guy, dude. Let me play some more of this dude. Hold on. Out there for we went up there for vacation just to you know one of those. Well, we're here visiting, but while we're here, let's check to see if this is something that would work for us, and it's going to be our new home. What is I, I, you say that you know you have family in Michigan too? But is there any other reasons why Michigan feels like a better fit? Honestly, the. Uh, state legislation there is more protect, uh, protective around my community uh, than here. The, they're going for uh, LGBTQIA plus protections in the state constitution. That pretty much enough to the deal for me was this is a this is a, a place where we can be and we're respected and protected and no more looking over our shoulder of wondering who is going to come for us next. Come for you to do what? Come, come for you to do what? Nobody's going to come for us to do what? What? Who's coming for you? The world never stops oh, growing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Who's coming for you? Boy, the, the false comparisons are insane. Nobody's coming for you. Nobody's doing anything to you. They're just saying, hey, leave these kids alone. Leave the kids alone. Oh God, they're coming for me. Oh God, they're stopping me. I feel like a, 
I'm like Harriet Tubman with a strap on. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop it. Nobody's coming for you. These disrespectful ass false comparisons, man. So it's up to us to say, hey, enough of that stuff. We ain't gonna let you, don't, don't compare your stuff to us. Yeah, who's this boogeyman y'all talking about? Who's coming for you? Nobody in Texas, nobody doing anything to you in Texas. Yeah? But I digress, ladies and gentlemen. We're in here heavy. We are in here heavy, ladies and gentlemen. Speaking of moist, there was a reparations um, discussion on um, MSNBC, one of those stations. They had a reparations discussion. And they, they had moist-ass Coleman Hughes up there, speaking of LGBT. They had somebody who used to be a part of the NAACP. He was talking about reparations. And I haven't even seen this. I already, Coleman Hughes is already, he's a moist, non-FBA coon. And I haven't even seen this. But this is, whenever, whenever they have their paid shills on here to talk against our reparations, I'm pretty sure Coleman Hughes is going to talk against our reparations. So let's take a look. I'm, I'm hearing this for the first time with you. So this is NBC News. They're talking about should black should the U.S. pay reparations to black citizens for slavery? Hold on. Why to make them whole? We do this not only with respect to Japanese Americans. So this guy here was speaking in the affirmative for reparations. So. Who were interned after World War II, but we also do it with respect to veterans, with respect to people who suffered in a natural disaster. We do it with respect to children who've been harmed by vaccines. We do it with respect to pensions that are insured. So we do this over and over again, which says that we can do it. And lastly, we do it yeah. at the level of millions, billions, even trillions of dollars. Okay, now some people in the chat room are asking, who is Coleman Hughes? Okay, let me give, because uh, I assume sometimes I'll be forgetting a lot of people might be new. So Coleman Hughes, they had, remember a couple of years ago, they had a reparations um, discussion, a nationwide reparations discussion, and they had Danny Glover on there, and I think they had Candace Owens, and they had this moist Sambo named Coleman Hughes, Todd Nisi Coates on there. Um, and they were giving kind of weak arguments. And this guy, they had a bunch of people talking about how we shouldn't get reparations. So Coleman Hughes was one of these people talking about how we shouldn't get reparations. We did some research on him, found out the guy's Puerto Rican. This guy is not even qualified to get reparations. So, yeah, we, we always point out that most of these people who we see talking about we shouldn't get reparations, they come from non-FBA backgrounds. So Coleman Hughes is actually a moist Puerto Rican dude. All right. So keep that in mind. Keep that context. So yeah, he's not even qualified to get reparations. And this is why we don't let people who are not qualified to get our reparations speak on it. Hold on. So we can't afford to do it. All right, let me, Coleman, here's, let me bring you in here. You testified before Congress in 2019 uh, against the idea of reparations. You said uh, paying uh, reparations to descendants of slavery would, quote, only divide the country further. Uh, and you thought it would insult black Americans by putting a price on the suffering as well and would make black Americans like yourself victims without their consent. I hope I captured that correctly, but you take it further, make your case against. So let me just make a distinction off the bat. I support reparations for redlining, mm -hmm. right? Because there are many victims of redlining that are still with us, they're still alive. Yeah, like um, you get, and Puerto Ricans can be included in that, yeah, so yeah. He includes it as long as his lineage can be included. Yeah, he's for it if they can weasel themselves into it. No, nigga. And Cornell, all, all the examples of successful reparations for other groups that you highlighted were examples of reparations given to directly the victims of these human rights abuses in their lifetimes or their immediate family members. No, because you have Native American tribes right now still getting forms of reparations. So yeah, that argument is dead. You have people from the Holocaust still getting um, checks. They survived and some of their descendants survived and they get checks from that. You get a whole bunch of different groups of people whose descendants get direct payments, particularly the Native American tribe. So yeah, kill that argument. That's why I support repar reparations for redlining paid directly to the victims as they're doing in Evanston outside of Chicago. That's not, no, 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 that, I mean, that's not real reparations. That's like some kind of, 
housing finesse. That's not reparations. Make a distinction between that and reparations for slavery, which ended in 1865. I know of no examples where groups are getting reparations for historical crimes that are over 150 years old. Native Americans. The red Native Americans, fool. What are you talking about? Red Native Americans. Old. And uh, unfortunately, the opportunity was tragically missed to pay it to the slaves uh, themselves or their immediate families. But claims like this time no, out. No, it, no, it hasn't been missed. No, 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 no. It has not been missed. Nobody's going to put a deadline on this. Nobody's going to put a deadline on our reparations. That's not going to happen. Ain't no damn. Ain't no, no, no. Y'all not going to put some artificial deadline. Oh, it was missed. No, it wasn't. It ain't been missed. No, no, no. This is an open-ended deadline. Ain't no deadline. It's, it has not been missed. Yeah, it's wide open. Yep, the window is wide open. It has not been missed. We're not going to let a tether tell us when the deadline was. No, thank you. Ow. Right, and this is timed out. And let me say one more thing. Martin Luther King had a plan for addressing the legacy of slavery, which he laid out in his book, uh, Why We Can't Wait. And he called it the Bill of Rights for, for the Disadvantaged. The Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged was not a race-based policy. It was a class-based anti-poverty program no. that would benefit the black poor and the white poor and the poor of all races. No, when Dr. King was talking about reparations, he was talking about black people. Don't do that all lives mattering of Dr. King. That's what I support in terms of addressing the legacy of slavery. That's what I feel is the wisest path forward for this country. Let me let me follow up a little bit, Coleman, because it, it is interesting that there are some, some forms of specific uh, uh, areas where you believe a, 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 a reparation of, of, of sorts should be put there. What, um, how you, what do you, how do you distinguish Jim Crow? Uh, and, and what is the right amount of time? And I say that Germany is still paying reparations to now descendants of Holocaust. Right, victims. right. This is what I just said. Yeah, don't, don't let them run that game on you guys. Don't let, don't, don't ever let them run that. Well, they, they should have paid the people directly. No, you have the descendants of people from all of these other aggrieved groups. Their descendants are getting money right now. Don't let these people run this con game on you. Don't let them run that game. The descendants of these other people get money right now. So what is the timeline where you feel like where you would draw the line? So I think reasonable people can disagree on this, and I don't claim to have the last word on the subject, but I think we can all agree reparations should be paid ideally in the lifetime of the victim. No, fools. He don't. He's just using talking points that these white supremacist think tanks give him. All right? That's all he's doing, and he's getting like a little lightweight pushback. They know not to have him on there with folks like us so we can really light his little old ass up. So... All he does is repeat these same debunked talking points from these white supremacist think tanks. If the victim dies, it should be paid to their spouse or to their children. Once you get to grandchildren and beyond, my personal view is that that's beyond my No, life. no, damn your personal view, because other people get money um, and their great-grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren are getting money. So, yeah, your personal view don't mean nothing. Um, and... Uh, uh, but like I said, reasonable people can disagree on this, but there's no doubt that, in my view, crimes from the 1850s and 60s are beyond... This ain't about your view. You're a tether who's a non-FBA punk who's not even qualified to get a check, dude. Statute of limitations. Do you see this where services can sort of be the... Okay, that's, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough. Okay. So, yeah, they always gonna pull out some tether to try to act like our representative. And this family, this is why we delineate when it comes to us discussing things that are pertinent to foundational black Americans, because for so long, we've allowed this to happen. They'll put a black face on TV to be spokespersons for us, and we never check these people's backgrounds. For a long time, we didn't check a lot of these people's backgrounds, dude. We didn't check their backgrounds and these people got on TV and got out here saying some nonsense. And I'm like, who, who is this guy? Then we started asking questions, man, whose man is that? Who knows this guy? And we start realizing nobody knew who these people were. These people would come out here representing us and nobody would know anything about them. And then we start looking in the background and like, oh, these guys aren't even from here. You understand? 
These guys aren't even from here. Speaking of that, down in, uh, I want to say Memphis, there was a situation, and a lot of people are talking about this. This, this story has gone viral. Some dusty Negro robbed an elderly black woman. And Action 5 News was like, do you know this man? Police want your help after this elderly woman was robbed trying to get cash at an ATM. So yeah, this is some Negro robbing an, an elderly black woman. And here's some interesting things about this. Now this happened in Memphis. This happened in Memphis. We're gonna get on his picture in a minute. Now they haven't caught this guy. They have not caught this guy, which is suspicious because this story and that image of him has gone viral. Now Memphis, a lot of black folks in Memphis, when the story like this goes viral and they still haven't caught this guy, that's a red flag because somebody would know this guy Especially, and there's a little reward out for the guy. Somebody would know this dude. That's a pretty clear shot of this ugly motherfucker's face. There's a clear shot of dude. And he hasn't been arrested yet. You got to ask some questions here. Number one, it's not even in our culture to rob elderly people like that. It's not in our culture to rob elderly black, elderly black people. That's kind of a no-no. Also, you do a crime like that, somebody you went to school with, your name is going to be floating around somewhere. Nobody knows this guy. Nobody online has outed this guy's name. Nobody knows this guy. That's a red flag, man. We as Foundational Black Americans, we know people. We know people within our community. We know people in our neighborhood. Somebody said it's either staged or he's a tether. Right. It's either staged or he's a tether. This is either staged or he's a tether. You dig? Because I did another pictorial breakdown of this dude. All right, hold on. Something is odd about that. Let's look at the picture here. I did a little breakdown. Hold on. All right, just the, the nature of the crime. He has a questionable hairline under that hoodie. The hairline is questionable. Extreme ash. Look at that hand. That dude's hand is hella ashy. All right, he got a janky ass outfit on. What the hell is he wearing? He got on some sweatpants, a sweatshirt with some damn shorts outside the sweatpants. That outfit is hella janky. He got on some damn sandals. You doing a robbery in some sandals? Come on, man. This is this is weird looking. And I I could swear I see some bammy crumbs on that damn hoodie. So yeah, this I'm, it's giving non-FBA. Uh, you ashy as hell, janky hairline, janky outfit, some sandals, and bammy crumbs. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Where your family from, burglar? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm getting some non-FBA vibes, guys. Somebody would know this guy. Yeah, a lot of these dudes who are non-FBA, they live in these communities where they're, they're not a part of the grand society of foundational black Americans. So we don't know none of them like that. So yeah, nobody's outing this guy. Nobody knows him within the foundation of black American community. So if that was a real situation, this Negro might be hiding out in some immigrant community. They are, they're very close knit and we don't know what goes on in their community. That's why I'm saying, how come this nigga has not been arrested yet? How come nobody knows this dude? Nobody has put his name out there. Somebody would know him, right? Somebody in the FBA community would know this dusty dude. And him doing a crime like this Man, even if he was a crackhead, you can't, the nigga, you can't really go up in the dope spot, nigga. You're making the trap hot. With that, you're doing a crime like this and it's, it's going nationwide and it's viral. You're making the dope spot hot. Nigga, you go, he stole like $60 from the sister. So now, nigga, you go get your dope. Nigga, the nigga who's selling you the dope is like, hey, man, you hot, my G. 
I can't have you in here. Right? Nigga, I can't even have you in the trap spot, my dude. You making the block hot with the, the, the bullshit you doing, my nigga. So, dude, I, I, I'm smelling octails, man. I'm, I'm smelling some bammy. I, that, I'm just saying. Something looks weird about dude. Shout out to Memphis. I love Memphis. Shout out to Memphis. Ain't that girl Sexy Red, the rapper? Ain't she from Memphis? Where are my Memphis people? And I love Memphis. I, I like Memphis rappers. I like um, I like Yo Gotti. I like um, Moneybag Yo. I like those guys. I like, um, you know, A-Ball MJG. But ain't Sexy Red from Memphis? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the lady's okay. Yeah, the sister's okay. Shout out to Nikki the God. Shout out to you, beloved. Oh, she's from St. Louis. Oh, that's right. She is from St. Louis. That's right. Yeah, she's from St. Louis. That's correct. She is from St. Louis. I remember she is from St. Louis. Lord, people are, I'm, I'm not going to play her freestyle. She did like a little freestyle of her song, Pound Town. And the song is a hit song. And people are talking about how you know, simplistic the lyrics are. Y'all love Memphis. Memphis is a is a thorough city, man. Memphis always shows me a lot of love. But yeah, that um, Glorilla, that's right. Glor yeah, I'm, I'm getting my ratchets mixed up. I'm getting my ratchets mixed up. Yeah, Glorilla is from Memphis. But um, yeah, Sexy Red. It's interesting who um, the white record executives are really putting on like that. Yeah, Sexy Red is a chick. She sings that song, Pound Town. Yeah, they're, they're getting, like, we. there's a, the Sookie Hanas and the Sexy Reds and the Glorillas. Boy, they are promoting the most ratchet. <laughs> and I'm not knocking them. You know, I want every, everybody to get their paper. I want everybody to get their paper. But boy, they get certain folks, man. I saw something about Sexy Red. She was doing an interview. And boy, she started talking about how, hold on, where's where's the thing? She started talking about how she didn't got chlamydia twice. That's Sexy Red right there. She, I think she was doing an interview with Angela Yee. Shout out to Angela Yee. That's my girl. And Sexy Red was talking about how she didn't had chlamydia multiple times. Oh my God, this is what y'all promoting to girls? Good Lord. God. You know, you, they, they're promoting these chicks out here who look like they don't drink enough water. Man. Good Lord, 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 Lord. Bless their hearts. This is what they're promoting, guys. Lord, yes, yes. She was doing an interview talking about how she done got chlamydia a couple of times. Oh, God. Boy, 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 boy. This is why family donate to the Hidden History Museum. <laughs> That's all I can say. Donate to the Hidden History Museum so you can take your children somewhere where we ain't promoting people with chlamydia. And I'm not knocking nobody for the ratchetness that goes on in their lives. I'm not knocking you, but damn. You know, we, you know. It's it's some it's some strange stuff that's being promoted out here, man. It's some strange stuff, yeah. Yeah, there's some dirty birds out here, boy. Some of these there's some dirty birdies out here, man. Lord. Boy, there are some dirty birdies. Lord, Lord, Lord. Uh, speaking of, um, crimes, y'all remember, man, I was telling people up there in New York, those Asian hate crimes, I kept telling people for the longest. Let me show y'all some of my tweets. I kept saying, hey, man, the Asian hate crimes that's going on in New York, this stuff is orchestrated by the police up there, man. Uh, here's some of my tweets from 2001. 
Many people believe the NYPD is orchestrating these random attacks on Asian people using black people who are paid assets. I'm call, I was calling it out. I was talking about how they're using crisis actors. Uh, man. Um, using people dressed like black exploitation characters. Um, talking about how the NYPD magically has footage of every random black person attacking an Asian person but they have no footage of people vandalizing black businesses and properties. So yeah, people suspect the NYPD is secretly orchestrating those Asian attacks, those attacks on Asian people. It's 2001, I just kept going on and on and on and on and on about it. Kept telling people, that's the police involved in those, those Asian attacks. Now, this story came out recently, all right? This just came out recently. Ex-NYPD detective accused of helping robbers target Asian business owners. This just came out, guys. Came out last Monday. I told people the NYPD has always been on this. A former NYPD detective was accused of taking bribes from a burglary crew who targeted Asian American owned businesses, family, and they're, they're still trying to minimize it. They're trying to make it seem like, oh, there it was one officer, it was a couple of officers. They're trying to scapegoat a couple of officers to make it seem like it was a couple of bad apples. No. What did I say? 2021. No, no, 2021. What did I say? 2021, not 2001. 2021, I'm sorry. 2021, 2021, but listen, 2021, I'm sorry guys, I meant 2021, so listen, I told y'all the NYPD was in on that, I just misspoke, 2021, I'm sorry, I got a lot of stuff that I'm trying to get out here to you guys, 2021, all the way back in 2021. And now they're low-key admitting it, but they're still trying to minimize it. They just got one. It's so red-handed. They had to own up to, yeah, 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 he's a dirty cop. He's a bad apple. Oh, yeah, we got one of the bad apples. They always make it, it it's always one bad apple they try to make it out to be. It's not no bad apple. This was something that's systematic with these guys. All right? It's not no damn bad apple. And we knew that it was being orchestrated by the NYPD, all right? We knew that. And also what they were doing, NYPD, he was helping these people targeting Asian Americans. He was helping them avoid arrest. See, that's, that's what that whole pink hoodie thing and had them wearing all of these weird colors. They were helping them to avoid arrest. That's why I kept telling people, that's why they had these people wearing these weird outfits, these weird identifiers on their outfits, the pink hoodies. Everybody's doing the same crime and they're wearing the same damn color. That's why I kept telling people that. People don't, black folks are not going around attacking Asian people just nobody can explain why. And they're all wearing the same or very similar colored weird outfits. Somebody's orchestrating that. I kept telling people that was the whole purpose so that those particular people would not get arrested. That That's to let them know, hey, that person's with us. So if they have on an orange hoodie or a weird orange wrap or orange bandana, that means don't touch them. They're with us. That's an identifier. I kept telling people that. I kept telling people that over and over again. They were using these different clothing codification type of um, um, identifiers to let people know, don't arrest these guys. They're one of us. Because listen, I know my culture of foundational black Americans. I know my culture. I know my people. I know my people, we don't sit around talking about Asians. We as foundational black Americans, none of us sit around plotting on no damn Asian people. That's just impractical. That's not our culture. 
We're not intimidated or threatened by Asian people. We're not sitting around talking about targeting them at all. So if there's a systematic targeting of Asian people, people outside of our community is orchestrating it. And the most logical group would be the NYPD and the San Francisco Police Department. Duh, just using common sense. You know? I knew we're, we're not orchestrating that. Dudes who's going to rob somebody, you ain't going to sit up and be like, we just going to rob Asians. Dudes who are going to rob somebody, they're going to rob anybody who's available to rob. You ain't just going to target no damn Asians. That makes no sense. All of that was designed to, A, and again, these cops were getting money. They were getting bribes. They were getting bribes in more ways than one. They were getting some secret money funded to them to look the other way. Also, these police agencies were getting all types of federal dollars allocated to them to help fight Asian crimes, fight crimes against Asians. We're going to allocate billions of dollars to the police to stop these Negroes because it's the black community who's doing it. It was a big old money finesse, man. Yeah, and they were, they were getting that hate crime bill through. This was a big-ass money finesse, man. Also, it was used to pass laws. Told y'all that was a big-ass finesse. So that's why it's up to us to stay on, on point with the media stories that go on out here, to let folks know what's really going on out here. It's up to us to do that, ladies and gentlemen. It is. But it's all gravy. But well, we got a lot of people in here. Shout out to everybody in here. Shout out to all the people who came to the Hidden History Museum last night. We had a phenomenal time last night at the Juneteenth celebration. We're going to have a July 1st event that we want everybody to come to. We'll have the flyer and all of that ready in a couple of days. And we'll have tickets on sale for that in a couple of days. That's going to be my birthday. So y'all really want to come through and turn up. Raise your hand if you want to come to the Tariq Nasheed birthday bash out here at the Hidden History Museum. Raise your hand if you want to come through. That's going to be real lovely, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all don't want to miss that. And by the way, guys, let me know what kind of food y'all want. Let me know what kind of food y'all want. I, we tried some Nigerian food last week. We tried some Nigerian food. My lady ordered some Nigerian food from a local place. This is me a few days ago. People kept asking me what I thought. Yeah, I got some jollof, some fufu, some migusi soup, some, I look like plantains. There's some, there's some wings in there. Let me say, man, I don't know if this place was a bad place or not. Wasn't really feeling it, to be honest. Wasn't really feeling it. Uh, I think the jollof, was very spicy. The wings, there's some little wings in there. The wings were, eh. The fufu was cool. I see people doing all the shit where you're rolling the fufu, eating it with your fingers. I, I use the fork. Uh, I wasn't about to do all that finger. Does it taste better if you use your hands? You, you dig? Does it taste better if you use your hand? Because I see people, you know, from the motherland, you know, you know, ooh, this shit is good. You be dipping it. In the, no, I ain't no rolling it up. Ooh, this is good, nigga. I, I wasn't doing all that. I'm using a fork. Yeah, it, I wasn't feeling it. That ugusi soup. I don't know what that. I took one bite. I couldn't do it to be honest. The the ugusi, I couldn't do it because the ugusi soup. That's supposed to be. It's not. It's a. They call it a soup, but it's like. God damn! How can I describe that? What what is a goosey, man? What what's it? It's supposed to be veggies. It smells like fish. What is it? And it's not really a soup. Yeah, this is the goosey soup. That's the stuff with the little green things in it. It it it's like a what, eh. it, they call it a soup. That's the look at the stuff with the green in it. It's not a soup, and it's it has a 
fish smell to it. Uh, is it mushed soup? Yeah, it's seed based. It's just not good. I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I I took one bite and it smelled funny. Eh. Uh, uh, it has dried smoked fish in it. It's like a stew. It's like fish stew. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to try another place, okay? Because my wife was like, um, yeah, this the rice is kind of burnt. So maybe this was a bad place. I'm going to try another. No, 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 look. Look, I'm going to try another place. I'm going to do a video. I do a video reaction to it because I... The fufu wasn't bad. I can, you know, fufu was like whatever. The jollof was just a little bit too hot. It was too spicy for me. It was a little bit too spicy. Uh, if we tried the Nigerian food, what would you guys recommend? I'm going to try a diff somebody else's jollof. I know people, different people make different jollof or whatever. I'm going to try. I'm going to give it another try. But yeah, I, I wasn't feeling that. I'm trying my best, but I wasn't really feeling it. I like Jamaican food. Yeah, I, I can rock with Jamaican food. Yeah, I, I rock with Jamaican food heavy. Yeah? But, um, yeah, I don't like Ethiopian food. I don't like it. I went to the Ethiopian spot on Fairfax. Did not like it. That wasn't good. And people kept saying, man, you got to try some Ethiopian food. I, th that wasn't good, man. That Ethiopian food was not good to me. To me, to me, I'm not gonna knock anybody's culture. That might be good to you. You know, I'm I'm, I'm a foundational Black American. Now, I grew up on foundational Black American cuisines, yeah? but I wasn't feeling that that Ethiopian food at all, man. All that stuff where you got to eat with your hand. I don't. I uh, I ain't really trying to do all that, man. Yeah. All the the food is all cold and weird, and you know different. <laughs> puddings and everything is soft and mushy. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I'm eating. Haitian food is all right. Haitian food is all right. You know, I eat some, you know, Haitian food when I went over there to Haiti when I was filming 1804. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's an acquired taste. But again, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try some more stuff. I'm going to try somebody else's jollof. Since y'all be bragging about that damn jollof, I'm going to try some less spicy jollof. The Swahili food was good. That was good. When I had Swahili food in um, um, Zanzibar, that was off the chain. That was very good. And when I went to Zimbabwe, I had some great dishes in Zimbabwe. That food was real good. They had real good food in Zimbabwe. Food was very, very good. We're in here heavy, ladies and gentlemen. We are in here heavy. Well, listen, man, y'all need to go get the movie American Maroon if you don't have it. Get the movie American Maroon. <clears throat> also, if you're in L.A., come by the museum. You come out of Mars, as a matter of fact. We're open from 11 to um, eleven to 4. Get your FBA flag, the mini flag. You can get the American Maroon DVD. You can get the Mink Slide album. We got the um, Egyptian Musk Mink Slide vinyl album. That's a, co um, a, collector's, <laughs> a collector's item. You can get that. Um... We have a lot of T-shirts there you can get at the museum. Come on through, man. 2131 West Jefferson. Come on through, man. Um, enjoy yourself at the museum. And there's going to be, again, tomorrow morning, California Live. They're running a story on the museum. Tomorrow morning, 1130. If you're in California, turn on NBC <clears throat> tomorrow morning at 1130 a.m. Turn on NBC. That's Channel 4 out here in California. <clears throat> we're Southern California, to watch the segment on L.A. Live. Are you saying I'm turning into a tether because I ate some jollof? <laughs> no. No, I'm, I'm trying people's food. And I said, hey, we might even try to, you know, have some diverse food at the museum. Uh, you have some people mad. So you have some tethers mad. Oh, no, nigga. Don't you try it. Don't you try to get back good with those nigga. I'm not trying to get back good. I'm we got non-FBA folks who come. I want everybody to come and enjoy themselves. 
and we're gonna and, and we're gonna have the non-FBA people who are riders. We're gonna have a night for them to come and enjoy themselves. Also, tethers. We're gonna have tether night, probably tether Tuesday. You then Tether Tuesday or Musty Monday. All right. We'll still have Tether Tuesday just for the Tether class, not for the riders, because, you know, we got our brothers and sisters who are riders. We do have our brothers and sisters who are riders. All right. Musty Monday won't be for you and Tether Tuesday won't be for you. The the That's going to be for the, the hateful people who hate on our FBA lineage. Yeah. But, yeah. Musty Mondays. Um, that's going to be for some of you guys. Hold on. Here's the flyer. Remember, here's the flyer for Musty Mondays. All right. Musty Mondays is going to be popping for the tethers. We'll have Musty Monday for you. And we'll have some of that Igusi soup. All right. Afro Beats to Midnight. That's the hottest club in L.A. Musty Mondays. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have that for the, the, the hateful, angry tethers. All right. That's Musty Monday. At the Museum Club, nigga. It's free Joe Loft until 10. All right. All right. And Musty Mondays will be popping. And also, when y'all on the dance floor at Musty Mondays, um, this is what y'all going to have to do on the dance floor. <laughs> Hold on. It's going to be this kind of action on the dance floor on Musty Mondays. Shout out to Cornbread Mafia. Hold on. We're going to have this kind of action on the dance floor. <laughs> Right there, that, we're gonna have that going on. Yeah, you gonna have to slip on a little deodorant on the on the honeys for musty Mondays while you're on the dance floor. You might have to slip on a little something for them, but it's all good. It's all gravy. You know, you can meet your honey, but she might be smelling a little funny. But you know, just slide a little something up under. But yeah. We're all inclusive. It's a very inclusive place, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very inclusive place. But anyway, let me get out of here, man. I got all my babies in the house. Let me let me do my Father's Day thing with the family. Um, great conversation. We had a great vibe tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Everybody make your recurring donation. Make your weekly or your monthly donation. That would be great. Hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Also, go get the movie American Maroon. You dig? American dash maroon.com. American dash maroon.com, ladies and gentlemen. Cornbread Mafia, hit me up too. Let me, because I want to holler at Cornbread Mafia, because I'm going to be in New York soon to work on this hip hop documentary. We're going to start filming that. And I definitely want to holler at my brother, because he knows a lot of stuff out there. And I want to holler at him. And we'll, we'll chop it up. But anyway, guys, it's been real. Go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Go to American-Maroon.com. Get your flags at OfficialFBA.com or come to the Hidden History Museum tomorrow and get your flags. I'm out of here. Puppy Akutu.